hi, my name is Jackie and welcome back to my channel. Today's got to be one of the most Mondayest Tuesdays I have endured in a really long time. I am having such a hard time concentrating today. I have a feeling it's because I have this beautiful new tea set just kind of loitering in this back cubby hole over here. But yeah, I uh, I decided to just kind of pause and we're gonna sip some tea. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this tea set as well as kind of talk about my tea journey as a whole so far. But before we get into it, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and smash that subscription button so you know when I upload. We like to talk about tea here. Today we are sipping Saturday Mass from White Two Tea, and this was a suggestion that came from Mildred Alvarez, aka Humming Tea, over on Instagram. So this is a ripe pour that has been blended with dried mandarin skin. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of a rinse. I'm not one to normally buy or collect any kind of teaware. I, I tend to use just the same couple of glass items on repeat. But uh, one of my friends, one of my non-tea drinking friends, I mean she drinks tea but not like, not like we drink tea, she was asking me about where I got these tiny little double walled like teacups. So I went onto the Crafted Leaf Teas website to just send her the link. While I was there, <laughs> I discovered this little Totoro tea pet and I couldn't resist. That's how this order came to be. Saturday Mass. Let's get this going before I, I, I start yammering on about everything else that I got. It is woody. Woody, like wood, like wet wood is the first thing that, that comes to mind when I, when I smell this uh, wet Tea puck? Tea coin? It almost makes me think of like the two by fours that you might find at a hardware store. No glass mug this time, but I just could not resist this using this teacup. This is so interesting. This is the second time I'm tasting this. And the first time I sipped it, I sipped it in my porcelain gaiwan, the white gaiwan that I that you've seen before if you if you follow my channel. I don't, I mean, this has got to be some kind of clay. I don't know if this is porcelain. This tastes so different than the first time I tried it. And I'm noticing that with several of the teas that I've tried so far. I'm getting some wet pine wood aromas from this. Oh man. Yeah. So this guy one is from Crafted Leaf Teas. It is the Blood Moon Light and Shadow Gaiwan, and the Gaiwan is handmade, and I think the glaze and firing process creates this really interesting, like, design on it. Parts of it are this really light shade of purple, and then there's, like, these really, like, rich, richer, dark purple patches, and, like, like, uh, craters almost in here. Like, I am just, I'm completely in love with this. This teacup is their Fallen Sakura teacup. It's one of those teacups that has, I don't think you're, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but I mean, it has a similar pattern as it does on the outside, but it looks sort of like uh, Sakura blossom leaves. It almost looks a little bit metallic. It makes me think of like maybe an oil spill almost. Let's get, a, let's get another one going. And since I was putting an order together, I went ahead and picked up a, a tea tray, which I'm, I'm not going to pick up and show you, um, just because there's no, like, tea in the tray. But I also picked up this tiny Totoro tea pet, which also doubles as, like, my lid rest because this didn't come with a saucer. I also picked up this little, this little guy, this little panda bear, living in... Ennui, he looks like. I don't have a name for him yet. Gotta get to know him first, I think. There is a sweetness in this that is coming out that, um, like, I hear people talk about how sweet poor can be, and I definitely notice a sweetness in this that I didn't notice when I was sipping this with my old guy one. I'm drinking this way too fast right now. I already, I can already tell. I'm gonna be worse off in this video compared to the last video just because of how fast I'm drinking this. 
But let's talk about that for a minute. Never in a million years did I think I would be sitting here in front of a camera talking about Guy Wands and Raw Pu'er, mostly because when I first started drinking tea, like drinking tea as like a hobby, I didn't even know this kind of stuff existed. Like tea, tea has always been a part of my life. My earliest memories of tea was in the 90s. <laughs> My Lipton made like instant tea and that's what my mom drank. And then of course, like I lived in the South. Like I lived in North Georgia for two and a half years and then I lived in Florida for four or five years and in the South and Southern parts of the US, sweet tea is really popular. Like it's almost a way of life. <laughs> And then, of course, you heard me talk about how I'm like a recovering coffee drinker. I'm actually, I'm not recovering. I still really love coffee. I have like three bags of it in my freezer right now. But back in college, back in college, I was, I mean, like most college students, we were coffee fiends, caffeine fiends. That's how you functioned on campus. Oh my God, this stuff is potent. I am like shaking. I had got to like slow this down. Holy moly. I say that as I like reach for another cup. I just honestly was not expecting this to be that good. <laughs> There's a really interesting creaminess to this now too. Like what the heck? What the heck? I feel like I've never had puer until today. Like what is this magic? But yeah, uh, so like I was a huge coffee fiend. And then just like out of the blue, I asked my mom to buy me a tea kettle for Christmas. I'm 90% positive I just wanted it for the aesthetic and I got one. I got just a shiny red tea kettle, the kind that you put on the stove, the kind that whistles when the water is boiling. And I also got a like box of, it was like, it was like a fruit medley from Celestial Seasonings. Is that what it is? I think so. It had like raspberry flavored tea, blueberry, a mixed berry, probably peach. And I thought I was so cool. This was back before I even knew blogs, tea blogs were a thing. So I don't know how any of these other teas came across my radar, but I really wanted to try Darjeeling tea and I really, really, really wanted to try Earl Grey. And you've heard me talk about it before, I'm sure. But back in the day, I'm, this is like 2000, like circa 2009, I thought that Earl Grey was the ish. Like I thought once you drank Earl Grey, you had tried it all. I went for, I could go from that raspberry zinger celestial seasonings to Earl Grey and I knew everything there was to know about the world of tea. My roommate and I trekked all the way to um, a world market. <laughs> which really isn't that worldly, but they do have like an international food section. And I found Earl Grey and I found Jar Darjeeling tea and I picked up both of those and I was so excited. But get this, it was Twinings. <laughs> I had found Twinings tea bags and I thought, I thought I had found a treasure, even though weeks later I would discover that I could buy the same exact tea in the grocery store. The next sort of milestone is the discovery of loose leaf tea. Where I went to school, they actually had a tea shop called Chocolate Tea. I didn't know that loose leaf tea was really a thing until I walked into that store and just saw like walls filled with glass jars of loose leaf tea and I just like, I tried as many as I could. I was so wrong in thinking that Earl Grey was like the ultimate tea. Clearly, clearly it's the strawberry flavored oolong. There's absolutely nothing wrong with strawberry flavored oolong. I happen to have a tea in my collection right now that is a strawberry flavored oolong. It's nice. The next milestone in my tea journey was when I discovered that you could buy tea online and specifically from Adagio Teas because they, like the Tabanas and the David's Teas of the world, they made better quality loose leaf tea so much more accessible to, to me. To me as like a super broke recent college graduate. This one ounce sample of Sencha is three bucks. And back then I'm pretty sure it was just $2. Again, this is like 10 years ago that I'm talking. This is like 2010 when I discovered Adagio teas. Shortly after discovering Adagio teas, I kind of plateaued, which is really weird because around that time I launched my blog. Back then it was called Books and Tea because the thought process was I was going to review books and tea. Um, but like 
not so much tea as it turns out. I would say I was still like 85% coffee and then 15% tea. That's basically my relationship with tea from 2013 to 2018. Like I called myself a tea drinker, but like in hindsight, like I almost feel like that's a sham because I wasn't the tea drinker that I am today. Then things started changing in 2018. For some reason, Stephanie over at the Tea Leaf Project popped up as like a recommended viewing on YouTube. I have no idea why because I, I never watched anything tea related on YouTube prior to, to discovering Stephanie. But there she was, and I watched her first video. It was probably something about David's tea. And from there on, I was hooked. And I'm pretty sure like that summer I watched her entire <laughs> her entire catalog of videos and she has a ton of videos, right? That made me like really excited for tea again. She convinced me to overindulge in the semi-annual sale at David's Tea and that was the first time that I had ever tried David's Tea. I overindulged in a uh, order from Herney and Sons. I tried T2 for the first time and this was like the first time that I'm like really trying anything outside of Adagio teas in like a really, really, really long time. It made me, like, I love Adagio teas, but I think introducing myself to other companies and other blends kind of like m made me really excited for tea again. And then in October of 2018, Oliver was born and I was on maternity leave and um, you know what? Delivering a baby does some really weird things with your hormones and like your brain chemistry. And I was feeling really isolated and like, the baby blues hit me really, really, really hard. And so I kind of like retreated into the internet and found the tea community on Instagram. And like Stephanie's passion, the, the tea community on Instagram just like also fueled my excitement for tea. And I would say that like from like 2018 on, like it's just, it's just continued to grow and to grow. And God, once I got my first guy one in 2000, oh, I got it in 2020. I mean, that couldn't have been like more perfect timing. I feel like the guy one came to me at such an important part of time because who knew, who knew that like two months after I got my guy one, the entire world would shut down. But like exploring tea through my Gaiwan just like connected me to tea, but also connected me to the tea community in a way that I don't think I would have if I didn't have this brewing vessel. I don't want that to sound like incredibly pretentious or elitist because it's not. I mean, if you're, if, if you're brewing Western style, that's still really awesome. I brew Western style every single day, but this just gave me a much more intimate relationship with the tea and it gave me the opportunity to express myself maybe a little bit more vulnerably than if I were to drink something western style if that makes any sense at all I don't know does I hmm, let me know and here we are chatting to you folks on film about about how wild it is that this tea <laughs> tastes so different in a cup made from clay versus a cup made from porcelain. This is not a conversation I thought I would ever be having ever. Because when you grow up drinking powdered Lipton iced tea, you don't even think that this is a real thing that people do. So yeah, that's my tea journey. All in a matter of like 10 years. That's actually a really long time, isn't it? That is a long time. I, people, people have advanced a lot faster than I have, and that's okay. It's okay to draw out your tea journey. It's okay if you never touch a Gaiwan. It is totally okay, as long as you're not drinking that powdered Lipton stuff. No, I'm just kidding. As long as you are enjoying yourself, as long as you just keep exploring, as long as you keep learning something new. I don't think that it's possible for anybody to know all that there is to know about tea. Unless, of course, you drink Earl Grey. Let's come back to this tea real quick. I don't know how many infusions I am deep into this. If I had to guess, this is probably seven or eight. It's still really flavorful. It's still super dark, although it is lightening up now, I can tell. My initial experience with this tea was just sort of like ho-hum. It really just read as one note, wet autumn forest floor. And just like right off the bat, that first infusion was just this really beautiful wet pine flavor, wet pine wood flavor. 
and then it kind of, I don't think I really talked about it because I was so distracted <laughs> in talking about my tea journey. There was like this really interesting creamy note in this, almost like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just remember I just remember drinking and thinking like, oh, that's creamy. And now it's kind of like tapering off into sort of more like a one note. What I have always understood most poor to be just sort of like wet forest floor and earth and dry tea leaves. Dry tea leaves, no. <laughs> Dried tree leaves. And as weird as it sounds, like I noticed something that tasted a little bit like pencil shavings. <laughs> I don't hate it. It's one of those things that like makes me feel really weirdly nostalgic. Pencil shavings. But now I would love to hear from you folks. What is the one thing that that launched your tea journey? In my case, it was that shiny red tea kettle. I had no idea that I would eventually discover Earl Grey tea and Adagio Teas, and Stephanie over at the Tea Leaf Project, and the Instagram community, and this wonderful vessel called the Gaiwan that would let me explore teas and also get me really, really tea drunk. <laughs> I never would have thought that I would discover what I consider more artisan teas, like this coin of a Saturday mask from White 2 Tea. It's been such an exciting journey, and I am super excited to learn more every single day. I am super excited to connect with everybody on Instagram, everybody on my YouTube channel. I I love tea. I love the tea community. Ah, man, I don't know. What would I be doing with my time if I didn't have tea? I would be working right now, for starters. <laughs> But yeah, let me know what is what is that one thing, what is that one moment that sort of like launched you on your tea journey. You may not have even realized it at that time, but like looking back, what was that one moment? But yeah, I'd love to hear from you. I'm digressing a lot. I don't I don't know how to end this. This is this always happens whenever I get like overly caffeinated. I become like this this like train that has lost control and I derail a lot and I just, I don't know how to say goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Now I feel like my face is melting. <laughs> oh man.